Hello, ladies. Got some eggs there to pick up. Well, in this part, you're probably watching the replay. Oh, no, we have one partner. So, uh, the one person, I can't see who you are, is not watching the replay. Anyway, a quick explanation as to the situation here this evening. I normally publish a video every Thursday on YouTube, and uh, this last week has been exceptionally busy. And the weather also hasn't been very great. There's been some rainy days uh, that, that's not usually conducive to outdoor filming. And uh, anyway, I've been working on a the what Justin Rhodes is calling a mega vlog, where he's vlogged Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I just finished the edit on that, and it's uploading to him now. Uh, Thursday evening. So I, all that said, I haven't had uh, the time to make my own video this week and especially edit. So I figure I will do a live video with no editing and show you guys the progress I've made since last week doing our zone one redesign. And I'll just walk over here real quick actually first and we'll do a quick recap for those of you guys who haven't seen that video. But if you haven't, still go back and watch it of course watch the ad okay so for context this right here of course is the garden area and that originally this big shelter here this originally was where uh i was going to build a um correction not build but i i did build it but i was building it for a milking parlor because we were going to get a family milk cow of course that fell through i'm going to try to answer these questions as they pop up um, because i'm on my phone i can't really see like the list of questions i just saw a question how's little buddy he is actually not feeling well uh, i dropped him off at school this morning and he was perfectly fine he was doing great, and uh, then his mother let me know this afternoon he wasn't doing well at school, wasn't feeling too well, and she picked him up from school. So, um, no fever or vomiting or anything like that, just, just not feeling great. But um, this morning he was fine, so hopefully he'll bounce back quickly. Uh, but back to here. Um, this was going to be a milking parlor. We didn't get the cow, and then I was overwintering um, livestock in there, and eventually it became Blue, my livestock guardian dog's house. And all of this area here, I'll try to pan around slow so you guys don't get nauseous, uh, was completely fenced in. And little buddy and I last week were spent several hours taking down all this fencing, and. It was quite a chore, and uh, let's see, I guess I should go, I should go this way, stand by. Um, yeah, here we go. So, and then I, I got the tractor and I hauled all the pallets back here because one of my walls was a pallet wall I had made. Um, sorry, so uh, I got the tractor and hauled them back here. As you can see, this was the beginning of phase two. I needed a lot of those panels to reuse to build this area out here. So all this was just wide open uh, last week. And see, we have these raised garden beds there. Just beyond there, in that spot where you see the wood chips, I had what was going to be my pig deep litter system from last year, which wasn't, or didn't happen. But we took that down, used the, pa the panels there and built this 48 foot, I mean, this is diagonal corner here. So 48 feet that way by 48 feet this way, square-ish, mostly square. Um, we did pretty good. It's pretty lined up. Not bad, right? A little off on there, but anyway, um, There, there's more to work here on this. Um, what I was hoping to do yesterday, but it was just pouring rain all day, uh, was to start the process 
of adding another tier. So the cattle panel is what I'm using here is, I think they're four feet tall. And this is gonna be a garden area. Um, I wanna get some perennials in here, like some fruit trees or blueberries. And I apologize, guys, I see comments popping up, but they go away on my phone. So pretty straight side, Dan, 48 by 48, it's a good size, yes. Um, ladies Farm, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, it's it's a good size, and and you'll see why. It's a, I'm actually afraid that I've made it a little too small. Um, I'll explain here in a minute. But um, there's it's going to be a garden area, and I need to keep deer out. We get a ton of wildlife through here: deer, elk, the occasional moose, and obviously they'll go right over this. So I'm going to go up, not at, at a full another four feet, because that's too much but uh, probably two to three feet two and a half feet somewhere in there so I'm going to attach another cattle panel on here and it's going to go up and of course keep the wildlife out um, but here so this is like north is this way so orientation is kind of important here with the the sun angle so this right here, closest to the fence, of course, not right on the fence. I'm, I, I want to plant some fruit trees along here. So I want to have them on the north because the sun's going to come around the south that way. And if they were, say, down here or some, somewhere in between, it's going to cast shade during the day on vegetation that needs sunlight so having them on the north is the best place for the fruit trees because they're obviously going to grow tall vertically and then the chicken run i'm still struggling this is where i say i'm not sure it's quite big enough i kind of wanted it to go further up this way but the problem is i don't know if you can tell here on the camera but there's a a dip right there and, a, and it bounces back up. It undulates a lot. It looks like the previous owner, or not previous owner, but a couple owners ago, uh, this was a rental property for a long time. It was kind of abused. And the guy, one of the people that owned this, had a landscaping business. And, whoops. Me... There we go. And right through here it looks like someone took the front loader of a of a tractor and just came through here and scraped this big gouge in the land um maybe just he needed fill dirt or something so there's like this and then it goes back up so it was really it would be a lot of work to put in the fencing right here i wanted it to come off the edge of that building up there have this for the trees and then chicken run here but um, it was fairly flat until we got to right here and we hit the edge of that bump and, but it worked out right here. Um, so let me come around this way. Right here is part of that big hump. And this is also a continuation of where that tractor came through and scraped. You can kind of see where it ends right there. Um, so right here, I had to get a little creative. You'll see the top of the cattle panels don't line up. Um, down here, I had to cut a panel short. This is only about eight, eight, no, this is 10 feet long. Cattle panel is normally 16. So I cut a panel here and then had to drop, uh, put in a new T-post and attach a new cattle panel to accommodate the, the, drop in the ground right there looks like the weather is nice steve says um it is huh? We've got these big dark clouds over here it was very warm or well, i say very warm it was like 58 59 60 degrees this afternoon it has dropped kind of got my jacket back well, i do have my jacket back on it's dropped i don't know what the temperature is it's probably high 40s low low 50s or something right now it's not bad but it's a little chilly um, anyway, yeah, so back to the tour here. 
So anyway, fruit trees, somewhere along in here, chicken run. It's for, for building compost and having a, a place to overwinter the chickens. The problem I run into at the greenhouse sometimes, it's great during the snow season, but then when the snow melts and things start warming up a little during the day, it gets really hot in there during the day and then cold again at night. And so I need to have a put. I, I mean, I, and I could actually incorporate the greenhouse into the chicken run so they can go in, in and out more freely, but I don't know. I haven't really figured out that part of it yet. And then we have our raised beds here. I'm going to get those back in order. I haven't used them in since 2017, I think, because the last time I actually used those raised beds. So I'd like to get them reworked. And then um, maybe some perennials out here, blueberries, that sort of thing. And in this corner right here, so we're in the southeast corner now, I have a gate here. with my cool Premier One hinge on here. Um, th this right here, I'm going to put some hog panels and make a corner 16 by 16 this way. And this is gonna be where my deep litter system for my pigs will be. And I think they're coming next weekend. I have to uh, talk to, with the breeder again to make sure, um, but we're super close to getting the pigs. They're coming anytime now. and. She'll be able to back her trailer up right up to here. We can just unload the pigs. They'll go right in and close the gate, and that's it. Um, the pigs will remain there for the season, actually. So I have my mound of wood chips. I'm going to order another truckload because those are pretty saturated from being out for so long. And just filling this area with the wood chips. I have the tractor now, so just using the bucket loader. Should be able to handle that pretty well. And, uh, of course, again, this is where that pig uh, deep litter system was. We were calling it the pig tent because we had, a, like, kind of a rain fly as a, as a top for it. Uh, that's a sweet setup, Dan, from Arizona Highland. Um, thank you. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I'm, I had this vision in my head for a while to do this. And I wasn't really sure, I mean, you can draw things on paper and have visions in your head, but until you actually do it, you don't really know how it's going to come out. And I'm, I love it. I, I'm really happy about this. Um, again, I kind of wish I was able to make it a little bit deeper north so I could have more room for the fruit trees. But other than that, I'm really digging it. Um, sorry, I got a text message coming in. So... This is the southwest corner. Uh, this is the only open spot right now, and I'm going to have a gate there. I want to have it to where I can get the tractor in there if I need to, because uh, I'm, you know, going to be bringing in soil for the uh, deep litter, not the deep litter, correction, the garden beds there. And, uh, yeah, so I just want to have that open for right now, and then when we're when we need to close it, when we get things planted, I'll put the the the, the fence in there uh, with another hinge so it'll... I'm guessing swinging this way would be smarter so it opens there so the hinge will go there. And um, so this area right here was also part of it. You can kind of see uh, there was fence line all along here. If any of you guys were watching in... 2017 into 2018, uh, this is where my uh, ewes lambed right here. Uh, this was, of course, had cattle panel um, roof over it. But as I walk backward here, you can see, you can see that this used to be a paddock right here. I had this all fenced off for since 2017, and this right here is probably my favorite. I will kind of pan down here. You can't see too terribly well right now, but the grass in here is epic. It's such great grass. All this just like blows up uh, in the later spring and the sheep just go nuts eating in here. So um, this is open now. I'm going to be able to Highland, Arizona Highland uh, Homestead. You remember that paddock? Yeah, it, it's, 
it's been in a lot of videos. Um, it, I, I just know like walking around you guys not being here, it's kind of hard to tell what's what, but, um, suggestion in the dip dug out section, make a who golden plant your fruit trees. Yeah. Um, the only problem with that is, um, it's not, so it's, it, it doesn't, uh, flow the way I wanted to. It's not in the right place and I need to fence around it still. And, I'd have to go back over there and show you, but it's not, it's, there are a lot of aspens right there. It take clearing and I, I'm making excuses because that is not a, that's not a bad idea. It would just be a lot of, a lot to make that happen because again, I got to keep the wildlife out. And as most of you guys probably know, uh, apple tree saplings are uh, like candy to deer. Uh, but I have the sheep cage now for grazing the sheep. So as this grass grows, I'm just going to, I still graze it. Just pull the sheep over there and, and they're, uh, ooh, what's this? Something buried in it. Oh, it's an old, um, what do you call it? Halter. <laughs> just buried in here. I have to get that later. Okay. So so I used all the cattle panels from this paddock and then the ones over from the, what was Blue's paddock over there to, to build this. And I have a bunch more still that I'll be able to use to go around. So with all the T-posts you see here, all the cattle panels, none of this cost me any money this year. I'm just reusing all the materials I already have. So all this was just elbow grease and sweat equity right or labor <laughs> it, and it was a lot um dan's partner came over saturday we were here um the better part of the day saturday putting this up and then sunday afternoon uh she and her daughter came over uh her daughter played with little buddy and well we we finished this up and um those fruit trees will draw the deer so steve yep they, they will. And this is a highway for them anyway. It's not like they're going to be drawn to the area when they normally wouldn't have been there. They come through here all the time anyway. So uh, I have to be vigilant about protecting them. So, um, yeah. So anyway, this, this was a lot to put in, but I, what I'm most happy about is it hasn't cost me any additional money. It's money I already spent years ago when I put these fences up. So it's cool to be able to reuse the um, materials like that. So that's what's going on with phase two. Um, it's again, been a lot of work, but next, if you're just joining now, um, just, just a, recap we kind of got the the phase two start is not completely done but we're, we're getting close to being able to um expand the garden get the raised beds going deep litter for the pigs and again there I, I have to check with jennifer the breeder but um they're coming soon uh if i'm going to see if she can bring them next weekend if she wanted to bring them sooner um, I'm not, <laughs> not going to be ready sooner, but yeah, so probably next weekend. So in like two weeks from now, uh, video, uh, they'll be out. And then the sheep, which will be in here May 15th ish, whatever weekend is closest to that. That's probably when I'm getting the sheep. Uh, mid May is what Tess said. They'll be, they'll be weaned by and, uh, we already have the chickens out on pasture. Uh, I'm going to walk over to the tractor and then turn around. You can see the, their wake they left behind. I don't know why. I just always think that's the coolest thing in the world, seeing that. And then in a couple of weeks, as it continues to rain, all of this is just going to be explosively green. What is the pig breed? Uh, Kathleen uh, is asking. It's um, Gloucester Old Spots. Uh, I've had them. The, this will be my third year with them. And 
I, I think they're a fantastic breed. I really got turned on to them from Brandon Sheard from Farmstead Meatsmith. That's what he prefers to raise. And he kind of talked me into them. Hi from Melbourne, Australia, mate. Hi, George. Uh, what time is it in Melbourne? Melbourne, Melbourne or Melbourne? Uh, help me with the pronunciation there. Uh, what time is it there? It's got to be really late or really early, I'm thinking, right? Um, but yeah, the old spot pigs are a, kind of a, a lazy, calm breed, which is what I wanted. I had American guinea hogs uh, for the year before, so it was 2017 I got those and overwintered a bunch of them into 18 and... Uh, there's some things I miss about the breed. I miss it. It's 9.42 a.m. Okay. <laughs> so not too early either. Um, there's some things I miss about the breed. The American guinea hogs are small and easy to handle. So harvest is way easier. My harvest with the old spots last fall, I mean, they were over two, uh, correction, over 350 pounds, which is, it, it was a lot to deal with. And... I told Jennifer this year, that the lady I'm getting the, my pigs from, uh, I want them freshly weaned. <laughs> the ones I got last year were about four months old plus when I got them already. So they were, they started big. I already got them kind of on the big side. So I, I want to get a, get them younger in the harvest. So if you guys have never done a pig harvest before, you might be wondering like, wouldn't you want it bigger? That's more meat. Yes, that is that is true there's more pork that way but it's way like the bigger the pig it's harder to harvest and process do all the um evisceration eviscer and all that and i wanted to do a scald and scrape which the bigger the hog the harder that's hard to the harder that is to do so Steve remembers the, the little guinea hogs. Yeah, way easier. But the thing, I, I didn't like their personality. And it could have just been the genetics of the ones I had. And they're not all like that as a breed. But they they were, uh, how do you, like boisterous little guys. Uh, if, if, you've, if you've ever heard the um, saying isn't the right word. But there, there's kind of a, a rule of thumb when it comes to animal breeds. And... If the animal has like straight up, here like that, it's like straight up um, erect ears. They're usually on the more wild, crazy side, like high energy animals with ears that kind of go to the side or kind of in the middle. And the animals with the ears that flop down are usually the calm, chill animals. Um, would you raise pigs or other people they paid you? I have, um, I have done that. Um, last year and the year before uh, i've raised two pigs and sold bit you know I, I raised two pigs and then one of them was for somebody else kind of thing um this year uh, i'm not planning on doing that i'm planning on just having the two and keeping them both for myself i mean i don't know we'll see what happens um but yeah i i don't know that i want to do more than two pigs because then i have to make the area bigger Rose from Wholesome Roots is here. Hello there, Rose. Welcome. Um, as I was saying about the different animal breeds with ears, so straight up, they're usually like more wild. Mid ears um, are kind of mid tempered, and then um, floppy ears are usually calm. And, and Willow, here's Willow. You can let's see if I can zoom in there. So speaking of, <laughs> hey baby girl, speaking of uh, the ears, Willow has, they're not like super floppy, but her ears go downward and it, which is normal for her breed. And it's a very calm, um, chill breed, the Akbash dogs. And there was a farmer in Michigan who was attacked by his male guinea hog and nearly took him out. He no longer raises them. We, Kathleen just raised two IPPs here in Southeast Idaho. They had the best personalities. Yeah, so IPPs are kind of in between. Um, the I, the I, and for those who don't know what an IPP is, that's Idaho Pasture Pig. The breed started in South Idaho. And the, the people who started that breed uh, retired some years ago and actually sold their 
uh, genetics to my friend John, who's um, now he has the original genetics for the IPPs, but now you can get them all over the country. Um, Ruth Kettle Falls, Washington, very nice. Um, so back to the the the. The, the, well, let me finish on the IPP. So the IPPs are kind of in between um, as far as they're, they're not as calm and lazy as the old spots, um, but they're definitely not one of the more high-strung wild ones, like, like say a red wattle or a tamworth. They're like way more active pigs. Uh, so I didn't like how... Uh, r r rascally or wild. I don't know if that's the right way to put it. The um, American guinea hogs were, they had the straight up ears and they were definitely like more active, like crazy pigs. Uh, whereas the old spots, they're, they're known for, they have the huge floppy ears that kind of cover their whole face. Sometimes you can't even see their eyes. And it's true. It's true with sheep. It's true with goats. It's true with dogs. Um, and it's true with pigs, with the ears. If they have flop ears, they're calm, chill animals. If they have the pointy ears, eh, it's probably not the best breed for my homestead. Um, like with, with Willow, the Akbash, her ears straight down. And then um, sometimes you'll see that Poe, the Rat Terrier here. And he's, and he's just wild, crazy, um, high strung. That's the better way to put it, high strung. And I like calm and chill. So, um, yeah, I try to, no matter what breed, I try to do that. The um, Katahdins, I will say, the Katahdin sheep are the mid. They, they kind of have, they don't have the straight up and down, but they go to the side, which is still okay. Hold on a second. Willow, Willow, no. No. <laughs> she knows, she, she knows she's not supposed to be doing that. What are you doing, baby girl? Don't be doing that. You're digging a hole. We don't look at your filthy. Ah, oh. it wouldn't be such a big deal, but she lives in the house with me. So <laughs> yeah, no digging, no digging. Steve says, Ruth, that is my wife's name. And we were supposed to travel to oh, the message disappeared before I could read it. Um, sorry. If there's any way, if you retype that, I can see it, but I, it just disappears from my screen. Actually, there's a button here I can, let's see. All messages are, okay, there, it's back, Never mind. Um, you went to Florida today to buy a new RV. We went to Naples instead. Um, that's absolutely beautiful dog. Yeah, uh, so Willow, yeah, she's gorgeous. Um, sorry, that's too close. I, mean, I think I'm zoomed in, there we go. Yeah, oh, thank you, baby girl. Yeah, she is, a, she is gorgeous. She's a sweetheart. Right, baby girl? No digging. <laughs> no digging. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's, the, that's the story with that. Um, of course, if you have any other livestock breed questions, I love that stuff, so feel free to ask. But uh, <clears throat> Rose, since you're... Just joining late. We took down all the fencing here and another paddock. And George, thank you for joining. I hope you have a wonderful day too. Take care, brother. Um, and we've created a whole new area out there uh, for the garden area. See so if we can get back over there. <clears throat> Shoot, my messages went away again. Let's see. Boom. There we go. Yeah, Steve, I, I was gonna ask, so she's still in the house. Yeah, um, she's a house pet now. I, I obviously have her go outside. So now I can't get the messages to go away. Okay, it's taking the whole screen. Anyway, yeah, Willow, she's, she's in the house with me. She just has terrible skin uh, condition. And she actually, so every every other month I have to get her uh, what's called Cytopoint. It's an injection. It's expensive. It's like $110 now. And uh, it keeps her from breaking out with the hot spots. And she actually, about two weeks ago, broke out. Well, yeah, a week and a half ago, 
broke out in some new hot spots. And I wasn't late getting her injection. It was like the week of she was supposed to get her next shot. And right before she got her shot, she was breaking out again. So it's just a sign. And, and here we are, like, this is a year and a half into giving her those shots. And she hasn't had any other outbreaks. And I was kind of wondering, like, maybe I can ease back. And maybe she doesn't need the shot anymore because it's been working so well. But no, um, she needs it still. So uh, I say all that to say uh, having her indoors keeping her clean and dry is also helping a lot i think and when when she's out and getting a lot of moisture trapped in her thick coat that's when we kind of see more flare-ups too so uh yeah i just keep her in the house now as you can see she's prone to dig and make a mess and that's not good for her skin and it's not good for the yard so yeah so yeah, so um, guys who just joined late, I uh, didn't have a normal uh, post today. Every Thursday is kind of my day where I, I like to publish a video every week. And spoiled sweetheart, yeah, she's totally spoiled. She is that. But um, yeah, so every Thursday I publish a video on YouTube and I didn't get one out today. Um, all week, I've been working on Justin Rhodes' new video. He has, it's coming out tomorrow. It says mega vlog. It was like five days of filming that we put into one video. I edited them super hard, so I cut them down a lot. And, and a lot of people have been complaining, oh, his videos are too short now. Well, that's my fault, and I, I take the credit for it. I won't say blame because it's actually like it's been a good thing um, for viewer. Uh, average view duration, uh, YouTube analytics, and pe keeping people engaged. Everyone says, oh, they, they really want like the 20 minute, 30 minute video, but they don't because the, the analytics don't lie. Most people don't watch them. They'll watch for five or 10 minutes and then and they're gone. And it hurts the algorithm. YouTube thinks, oh, people don't like this video. They keep clicking off. They're not finishing the video. We're, you know, YouTube is, we're not going to promote this video then because it stinks, obviously. So um, that, that's the idea. Like, well, if we can make the videos concise and condense and cut out all the fat, keep them interesting and pe keep, pe keep people engaged, more and more people will watch them, which is always the idea. I mean, as YouTube creators, we don't make a video, um, and just, we're okay with no one watching. We want people to watch, otherwise we wouldn't make them. And the only way more people are going to watch is if they're good and, and people that do watch them watch all the way through so um it's, it's kind of my rant about it there's been a lot of a lot of feedback about it uh, negative a lot of people complaining but it's like um i don't think people understand any of this how youtube actually works because if they did they would watch the video they don't, but they complain anyway. So I, I don't know what I don't know what to tell them about it. If if people were actually watching the 20, 30 minute videos all the way through, we'd still make them. But um, no one does. So, um, well, I say no one, but it's like it's like ten percent of people do, or something ridiculously low. So it's like why? Um, Judy says they're too short. Um, they're actually I, I I will stand by what I said. They're not too short. They're actually. It, if they were too short, we would have like 90, 100% retention on them. They're not. They're 70%. So 30% of people still find them too long. Like, and, um, or not interesting enough. They get boring or something like that. So if it's getting boring, it's only going to get more boring as you go. Like, so, um, that, that's, that's the deal there. But, um, Sorry about that side rant. The point is, um, <laughs> I'm editing them uh, very, I'm, we call it brutal editing. Um, so I, I'm, I'm doing that, keeping, keeping them um, higher intensity, moving fast, less, less ruts, less dragging, because that's where people click off. Um, I just lost the comment. I'm losing comments here, guys. Sorry, one second. I got to pull them back up. Shorter is better for me. Uh, wait, let me go back. Uh, 
uh, uh, Rose says his thumbnails are so extra late. Yeah. Um, so I'm not doing the thumbnails anymore. Justin is doing them. And um, let's see. Steve, I am subscribed and have the bell clicked, but I never get notifications about the videos. Yeah, um, I don't know. What, I don't know what the workaround is with that because I, I hear that from a lot of people too about my videos, um, and I still hear from old subscribers all the time that because I, I stopped um, when I was going through the divorce, I didn't make many videos, so a lot of people fell off like my suggested video feed my channel it's a concept they called getting canceled my channel got canceled and that's a big reason why like i don't get that many views now like i i i got when i had 30,000 subscribers i got way more views than i have now at 75,000 subscribers um youtube doesn't promote my videos anymore and a lot of people don't ever get notices some some do and i don't know why i don't know what that like how they decide who gets it or doesn't um okay I like 10 minute videos, 30 is too much for my ADHD. Yeah, and, and that's that's how I, 70, 80% of people are. Um, and a lot of it's TikTok too. TikTok uh, is really hurting people's attention spans. Can't you put longer versions on Abundance Plus? Um, theoretically we could, but it's a lot more work. It's not just like a little bit more work to create a second video, it's a lot more. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure it's really any different for people who watch an Abundance Plus. 70% retention is really high. Rose is asking, and, um, yes, I would say that's above average. Um, if, you, if you're getting over 50%, you're, you're, you're doing good, but where you want to be is 60, 70% and up. Uh, that's where YouTube is like, oh, people like this video and we're going to promote this video. Uh, what's with the clickbait style thumbnails? Do they work? Um, I'm not I'm not sure if you're referring to Justin's thumbnails. I don't find them to be clickbait at all. Um, every uh, We're pretty careful about that. If it, every video title and thumbnail uh has to be appropriate to what's in the video because if they're not if they are clickbait you're just you just leave the video right away so it doesn't serve anybody it doesn't do anybody any good so i don't i'm not sure kathleen like if you're finding it to be clickbait are you actually watching the video through i don't know let me know i i don't know i i don't find them to be that way at all um Scott, are you on YouTube to make money or share your knowledge with humanity? Well, they go hand in hand, Scott. Um, if, if, if I don't, if I'm not compensated at all for my time, I can't put the time into making the videos to share anything with anybody. Um, so, and, and just for, just for you guys to know, I spend about eight hours a week on my videos, um, which is not a lot. I'm making one video a week and I put about eight hours into it. But do you know how much money I get back for it? Probably about on a good video. Like when I get a lot of, I say a lot, a lot from my channel reviews, I might get $20 back. So how many of you guys are, going, are out there willing to work eight hours and get 20 bucks back? Probably not many. So in, it's very much the case that it's a charity but um how should i put this so i i don't make only what would that be 80 bucks a month because i have a um what how many videos like over 600 videos and some of them have done a lot better than that and are still returning so i do get i i get more money than that a month on youtube definitely it's definitely a very very small part-time income but um in order for me to be able to put time into youtube that means i am not putting time into work elsewhere uh, i'm not I'm, if w w i take a it's a day out of my week off to do youtube um, that i could be doing projects for abundance plus where i, I bill hourly so i don't i'm not sal salary I, I i only get paid when i show up to work so and that's the same for all my other clients, which I've been, it's been hustling this whole week. It's been crazy. Um, I've had two different 
all all these groups want their their uh, annual fundraiser videos done right now so i'm getting hammered um so when i take time away to, from my clients where they're paying me uh to do youtube i'm not getting paid so i have to be able to get some kind of compensation back to justify allocating my time towards it so if 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 I spend eight hours. That's costing me money to make this video. I, 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 I do spend more money on what it costs me to make than, than I get back on a lot of videos. And I do that because I, I enjoy making them and I do that because I enjoy serving the community back. But um, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of a not fair question, Scott, when you say, oh, do you want money or do you want to help? you know, share your knowledge with humanity. Like there, there's way more to it. And, and it, it, I mean, all it's, 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 it's a job and a lot goes into it. It's not just like pulling out a camera and, and, and there you go. There's a video. There's, there's a lot that goes into it. It's a lot of time. It takes, um, a lot of energy. Like in that, that video I, I did, I don't know, uh, not many people watched it, but the Jace medical one, I, I, I spent a week and a half writing a screenplay uh, for that video, and then four or five days of, of filming at various locations, bringing in actors. Um, it, it like I put a lot into that video, making a short film. So, um, it, it, what I'm getting at is a lot goes into it. It's not as easy as you think, and it costs me money. So I am, um, when I talk about like making a video that YouTube is going to uh, help spread more, help promote, so we can get more views and get more people watching it. That's the other thing I wanted to say. Like, if we want people to actually see the content, that it means it needs to go in front of more eyes. People, if they watch it all the way through and it pleases the algorithm to the point where YouTube decides, hey, we're going to promote this more, which is what we want. So more people see it and more people are more inclined to maybe leave behind their conventional eating or animal husbandry and, and join us in this homesteading movement. If we really want that, it has to spread and when it spreads a byproduct of that is also getting more ad revenue from youtube so they go hand in hand you can't have one without the other um unless you turn your monetization off and then that's just stupid like to say no i don't want to be compensated for all my hard work that's just stupid so i i don't know i don't know what to say about that um i think i've had some other comments pop up let's see let me scroll back here Um, looks like I had, we had some, uh, what do you call it? Spammers. Thank you, Rose, for taking care of that. Uh, let's see. Always watching from s small 40 acre in Boone, Colorado, I'm guessing. CEO, right? That's, thank you for watching E and J. Um, Rose wants to message me privately about being canceled. Yeah, please do. Um, there we go. I wish I could compensate my time from YouTube. Not even close for me. Yeah, and that's for true for so many people. Like, there's so many people who put so much into it. I get a little bit back, but not nearly. Like, if you put a dollar amount on what I get back and what I, how much I make per hour, um, it's it's ridiculous. So it, if I only looked at that, it no, it would not be worth it. Um, Keep doing what you're doing. Always look forward to your videos and we're a big reason I joined Abundance Plus. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that, Jay. Your videos are what inspired me towards homesteading in, in Northern Idaho from Steve. Um, and so that's a big part of my motivation when I get comments like that. Um, and I get emails. Um, I haven't as much lately, but I used to get emails all the time from people all around the world that would say, hey, I'm raising sheep now because I saw your video and it made me want to do it. And to me, that was like uh, totally worth it. So 
Rose, I spent two hours today just making a PNG to pop up for five seconds in my video. Yeah, I feel your pain on that. Like, that's the other thing, like editing, like especially when you see anything that like special effects or graphics or anything like that, like there could be a lot. Sometimes, sometimes, you know, I could spend 20, 30, 40 minutes looking for the right music for something um, because you, you can't get it to sound right otherwise. And, and you just... Um, you just got to find the right song and that takes time uh and devils just said jester nodes i'm not sure what that comment means but cool looks like we're all cut up on comments um yeah so sorry for the little bit of youtube rant there scott kind of <laughs> asked a sensitive question uh what are you doing baby girl you look awfully cozy down there Yeah, anyway, so, yeah, anytime you guys have, um, it, you know, you, you want to learn more about, like, the YouTube behind the scenes, not necessarily the, the content creation, but what, the why, uh, I'm happy to answer those questions, because I promise you, there's a reason, there's a reason for everything, and none of this is, um, what do you call it, um, without thought or, or whimsical or anything like that it used to be in the early days especially for me I, I had no idea anything about youtube i was like oh just make a video and put it up and that doesn't work so um there's there's you have to understand how the algorithm works you have to understand you can make the best video in the world like that jace medical video i thought was pretty good there were a few like issues or the the image got jello-y a few times because I had my stabilizer activated on my camera and the lens I was using didn't agree with using that stabilizer. And I didn't know it till I got in the edit. Aside from that, I thought it was a cool video, but a lot of people didn't click on it. Um, and uh, Rose is saying, I feel like my channel is shadow banned. I took time off, been, I ah, lost it. There it goes. Been consistent for four months and still no views. Yeah, I... I've been back for over two years, posting every week. And for the last year, um, from April 2021, I, I was posting once a week the whole year before, but I didn't have like a set date. I, I wasn't in a place where I felt I could commit to a certain day of the week. But since April of 2021, I've posted every Thursday. Anna, hi from the Catskill Mountains in New York. It's cold today. What is your temperature there? I used to live not too far from up uh, from there near the Catskills. We go to the Catskill Game Ranch one, once in a while. If, if that's familiar to you, let me know in the comment there. Um, I actually rode an elephant there once when I was four years old. But anyway, um, uh, what was I saying? Um, Rose. Uh, Oh yeah, so I, I post every Thursday and it's been consistent with that for a year now and like no changes really. So what kind of tarp do you have over the U shelter there? Uh, the, the, the silver one there, I'm guessing you're asking. Um, that is, it's one I get, you can get them at any farm store, not Home Depot. Do not go to Home Depot to buy your tarps. They, they're only at best the medium duty ones and they don't last very long. Um, these, that right there is a heavy duty. It's literally says heavy duty on the bag that you buy it in. And it's a large dimension cause that unit, let's see, like it's uh, 20 feet this way and 10 feet wide. So in order for it to go all the way around i forgot what the exact dimensions are but it's like 30 something by i don't know but um yeah so tractor supply if you have one of those near you that's a farm store sometimes they're just little local co-op stores um uh, if you're in the northwest we have north 40 is uh, a farm store chain it's just like tractor supply and they sell these heavy duty tarps and they last for years. This one is five years old and it's kind of getting to the point where it needs replacement, but that's the only way to go really. 
All right, let me go back to comments here for a second. Uh, hello from Connecticut. Gary. Hi, Gary. Um, e and J Kassler. I don't have any animals when I want to. I have no idea how to start, and I'm scared. Start with some chickens. And uh, I would get a uh, permaculture chickens DVD. Um, in fact, if you get on AbundancePlus.com, if you sign up seven-day free membership, you can watch it for free in there. And it's, I don't know, an hour and a half, something like that, and it teaches you everything you need to know to start to get started with chickens and just watch it a couple times. And if you want a book, Harvey Ussery's Small Scale Poultry, I think it's called Small Scale Poultry Flock, uh, it's probably the best starter book um, on getting chickens going. So if you just do that and just follow their instructions, you should be good to go. And of course, you can watch the grass-fed homestead. <laughs> uh, Steve, start with your husband. My wife treats me like an animal, and now she wants chickens. <laughs> okay, that's in response to the, the last comment. Harbor Freight has great tarps. Really? Okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know they had heavy-duty tarps there. Um, the high was 40. Now it's 37, dropping to 31. Wood stove has been burning since last night. We were spoiled after the snowstorm last week. Yeah. Um, it, it's The sun's kind of coming back out from the clouds now. Um, it's still a little chilly here. That we're, You're definitely colder than we are, though. Daniela, hello from Ohio. Hi, Daniela. It's going to be really cold this winter. Let's see. My wrench is gone. Okay. <laughs> uh, Belgium. Uh, Rayanne, am I saying that right? Rayanne L. Yeah, we'll stop with Rayanne. <laughs> Hi, Rayanne. Uh, th thank you for joining us from Belgium. What time is it in Belgium? Or in your time zone? Chickens are so fun. Monica, hello, ma hello, young man. Greetings from Indiana. Indiana! What part of Indiana are you in? Uh, EJ. Ah, sorry, I'm... Not used to doing this on my phone. My comments are going. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Love your story, bro. Watched all your videos. Thank you. I appreciate that. Justin Rhodes is also amazing. Chicken. Con yes. Yeah. He's the chicken man. The chicken ninja master. It's like Ryan. Okay. Sorry. Not not Rayan. Ryan. It's like two hour. Two. It is that. Uh, like. I get you're ahead there, so it's two in the morning. Like two, um, I'm guessing that would be like two a.m. for us. Oh, your admin wrench. I had no idea what you're talking about, Rose. I didn't. I did not do anything to change that. Um, I'm not sure how to fix that from my phone either. If you can tell me really quick, I'll try and do it. Um, but I don't know why you had it earlier, so. Near Henryville. I don't know where that is. Is that near Indianapolis? That's all I know. <laughs> Hello from Manitoba. Hi, Deb. Catskill Game Farm is closed sometime now. It did become a campground and museum of the past presently when our kids... Yeah. Well, that's, that's sad they closed. Yeah, I used, my parents used to take me there as a, as, as a child. M me and my brother... Yeah, Rose in Georgia, she's growing tomatoes. I do miss Georgia's growing season, but I don't miss the rest of their weather. That is for sure. Boone, Colorado. Is there anyone from Colorado that has a donkey for sale? Please reach out. Um, Abundance Plus Marketplace is coming soon. Uh, you can check that out. Southern Indiana across the river from Louisville. Okay. Sean Northcutt, what's going on here? Yeah, we're just having a little chat. Sean is, um, Sean was in a few of my videos. Was that last summer, last June? I think so. Or was that the year before? No, it was the year before. Um, Sean and I went to high school together. Uh, old friends. Uh, three dots on the side of my name. Click in admin. So I don't have three dots on the side of your name. There's nothing there. Let me see if I... Here's an add moderator button. Wholesome Roots is now... More, okay. It says it's fixed. <laughs> Let me know if that's not true. Um, you're, 
you're growing mold on your roof in Miami. I don't, I don't doubt it. Uh, very, very moist there. Um, how, so how did you go from New York to now? So now I'm in North Idaho. Uh, so my entire family, with the exception of me, uh, is from New York City. Well, my dad was born in upstate actually, but anyway, everyone else was born in New York and um, I was born in New Jersey and we lived in New Jersey for a few years and then we moved to Pennsylvania and then my parents moved us to Arizona. So I lived in Phoenix for a year and then we moved to Georgia, Atlanta area where I stayed for 20 something years before moving to Idaho. So most of that moving around, it was just my parents um, being indecisive. <laughs> Live chat, go back to chat here. Rose is back as moderator. Thank you, Rose. Yeah, it is. Be um, it is a beautiful day here. Uh, it was bright, sunshiny earlier. It was warm. I actually had my jacket off earlier. It's it's gotten a little chilly this evening here, but um, you can see. Let me flip this around. Beautiful sky, melt in the background. How is dance partner feeling? Miss seeing your videos. I'll be looking for them. Um, a dance partner is cancer free. She is in good health. Uh, Shauna Singh, Phoenix, Peoria, Atlanta. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> no one knows where Peoria, Arizona is, dude. I have to say it Phoenix because it's like right outside of Phoenix. Uh, anyway, so... What was I saying? Oh yeah, dance partner. So she actually, can we see your chickens? Yeah, I was over there earlier. We'll go back over there. I'll uh, walk and talk here. But this whole area here uh, was the expansion and the kind of the point of this whole video um, uh, was to show you guys this because I wasn't able to make a um, published normal video this week because I've been slammed busy. So I just figured we'd come out and do a live stream real quick. But um, all of this, the, all this fencing we put up over the weekend. Um, do you like Idaho weather better than Pennsylvania? Yes, I do. Um, Idaho getting crowded. Yes, it is. <laughs> North, it's, it's been crazy um, growth up here lately. Um, we can get to that later. But weather in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania has a way harsher winter um, than we have here in Idaho. And we have a better summer with less humidity. So yeah, it's, I love the weather here way better than the Northeast. Uh, Al, hi from Virginia. Missed your videos because they haven't been showing up for me. Wow. Yeah. See, I get that a lot. A lot of, a lot of people say, oh, we, we didn't know uh, you're making videos again, or I'll get a comment on the video. Oh, it's good to see you back. Like I've been back for two years, but nobody knows. So uh, I appreciate you. Um, let me know that. And thank you for watching here. Um, there's a lot of video, a lot of content that kept up on. <laughs> um, but anyway, all of this. So this was all the point of the video and dance partner for those asking about her. She came over on the weekend, to help me put all this up. We didn't capture any video because we were just hustling, trying to get it done. We were such a time crunch with everything. Uh, and filming, that's another thing. I had the question earlier, are you doing this for money or to share the knowledge? Well, the whole filming of it, anyone who does YouTube can tell you it's at least 30% more but sometimes more like but it, it'd say if it would take me an hour to do a project normally and then I want to film it and I want to film it well it might be two hours it might be you know an hour and a half somewhere in there to add a lot of time and something like this where it was several hours like all day kind of thing like um it yeah anyway <laughs> um we didn't get any filming of it here are the chickens here are the ladies hello girls <laughs> They are in the John Suskovich style chicken tractor. And uh, that's been working out great. Like, I thought, oh, I have to build nest boxes and all this stuff. Well, it's not been a problem. They just lay on the ground. I come pick them up. It's not been a big deal. And I keep moving them so it doesn't get all yucky in there or anything like that. Let me check back on comments here a second. My battery is getting low here, guys. So if I cut off, I'm sorry, it's because my battery died. Um... Uh, Idaho, yeah, definitely getting crowded, Monica. Anna, wow, I guess your parents taught or yeah, taught you where not to live. Yeah, exactly. We tried all the different regions of the... We didn't try anywhere in the Midwest. <laughs> but um, 
yeah, I kind of got a taste for what I liked or didn't like. Hi from Virginia. Okay, we already read that one. Um, how is the pasture recovering? Oh, so let me get go over here. It's a little bit of a walk, but here we go. You can actually see right here. You see kind of me and then dark green. And then this is, I had the sheep come right through here, you, um, through their cage. You can just crazy how you can see the differences just where I was grazing the sheep. Um, and then they arched around there. You can see it kind of continue. But yeah, here's where I did all the um, uh, tilling, tilling with the tractor. One part of it and the other part of it that whole, whole section on the driver there it's i when i did that it got warm like it was in the high 50s low 60s and i was like oh man i really need to get the seed down because we're gonna get germination and we're still getting some rain and um and then it got cold again and it's been cold since with the exception of today and um a few last weekend it, it warmed up a little bit so i'm hoping we'll get germination soon but as you can see like um there's little little things like this coming up but this is not what i drop seed for it's not what i planted this is just uh you know what was already here kind of thing um no uh new germination yet i hope that's what you were asking about um that looks like knapweed maybe coming up so I'm a little disappointed we're not getting any germination yet. Um, but when we do, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. So uh, let me show you over here. This was, a, this was a huge pig rut over there that's been completely smoothed out now. Um, I, I am happy to see, I am seeing there there is still a fair amount of grass seed here that I've put down. I was really worried because I've been seeing wild birds just gorge themselves on this. Um, oh, look at this. Actually, it looks like maybe we have some germination in here. Um, Steve with the super chat. Awesome. Thank you so much. We hope to go back to Northern Idaho this summer in our new RV. Sold the house and now homeless for now. Yeah. That's it. it uh, depends on how you look at that. It could be either a liberating feeling or scary, right? But um, you're you're you have the RV. You can go anywhere you want now, and you're not tied down anywhere. That's kind of cool. So, congrats on that, and thank you for the super chat. That's cool. Um, next good rain, it'll germinate. That's what I'm hoping for. We 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 got a great rain yet. 